I get it. The keys are all laid out right in front of us. It's so easy and so tempting to look down. I get it. But have you ever considered that looking down all the time can actually drastically slow down your piano progress? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Manu from Piano Sight Reading, where I give sight reading tips to piano players. In this video, I'm going to show you why piano players should not look down and how being able to not look down can really improve your overall playing and your sight reading. And stick around until the end of the video because I'll show you one small thing that you can start implementing right away in your practice. And this will help you play without looking down. So why is looking down such a bad thing for a piano player? Why is it recommended to keep looking up? Well, unless you have supernatural powers, you can only ever look at one place at a time, right? You can't both look at the music and at your eyes. It would be good, but unfortunately, we can't do that. So that means that when you take your eyes off the music, you can no longer look ahead. You can't see what notes are coming up and you can't prepare. And so what ends up happening is that you play a little bit, then you look down, you check what keys you pressed, you look back up, you try to find where you were, you play the next little bit, you look down, you check, and on it goes. And whenever you're looking down, you're breaking the flow of the music. It's like driving and pressing the accelerator and then pressing the brakes, pressing the accelerator, pressing the brakes, instead of keeping the foot on the accelerator and then driving smoothly like you see in TV commercials. Now, which do you think is more enjoyable to drive, stop, drive, stop like this, or to drive at one constant speed smoothly like that. And as a piano player, which is more enjoyable? Playing a few notes, stopping, playing a few notes, stopping, or actually playing through the piece at a constant speed where you can really listen to the melody and the harmony and you can actually hear it unravel in real time. Now, I will assume that you will prefer the latter. You will enjoy playing at a constant speed rather than stopping all the time. Because when you're looking down, it's like you're putting the foot on the brakes, right? And so what we want to learn is to keep going and enjoy the ride, right? So what is the solution? How do we get to the stage where we can play smoothly at a constant speed? Well, by developing the skill to play without looking down. And this means developing your spatial awareness. So that's knowing where the keys are knowing where the black keys are and the white keys, knowing the distances between keys, and also being familiar with common shapes of the hand, common patterns, things like triads, arpeggios, intervals, all of these things you should be able to play without looking down. And unfortunately, the only way to develop this skill is actually to not look down. Your sense of touch will develop way faster if you stop relying on your sight. And not only that, but your sense of hearing will also improve because you'll be able to start listening to what you're playing and you'll be able to make connections between what you see in the score and what you're playing. The people that are most sensitive to touch and sounds are the people who don't have sight, who are blind. So what we must do is take away our sight 
to develop the other senses. Now, luckily for us, the design of the piano is actually really clever because the black keys are higher up, so it's easy to feel them just by touch. It's a bit like the raised dots in Braille, right? The, the blind can feel the dots because they're raised. Piano players can feel the black keys because they're raised. So we need to use the black keys to our advantage. And the other great thing about the layout of the piano is that the black keys are grouped in groups of two and three. And just by feel, you can tell whether it's a group of three or a group of two. And so then you can work out what the white keys are based on which group of black keys you are touching. So the one thing that you can start doing right away in your practice is this. So before you practice anything, make sure that you are sitting in the middle of the keyboard in front of middle C and make sure you are sitting not too closely and not too far away from the piano. And then starting with the right hand, place fingers two and three on the two black keys next to middle C. And once you've done that, keep looking ahead. So no look down, no looking down from now on. And then just by feel, you're going to find the other two black keys. And then you go back down. Oh, so here I've missed. So let's try again. Oop. There we go. And the idea is to get to the stage where you can land on the two black keys in one movement. So you're not fumbling around. Once you're comfortable with that, you can do the three black keys. So using fingers two, three, four on the black keys near middle C. So place, place the three, place the three fingers and then look up and then you're going to feel the three black keys. And then lastly is you put the two and threes together. So you start with the groups of two. So you go two and then you go to the three black keys, two black keys, three black keys. So the, the distance will be much smaller and you keep going like that. And then you do the same thing in the left hand. So doing the two black keys starting near middle, middle C, two, 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 and then do the threes. And then you do a combination of two black keys, three black keys, two, three. And you'll see that it will feel a little bit difficult at the start. You will not always get it right, but keep doing them because the body is very clever. It can it will learn the distances between the keys. So just trust in the process and just go over that before you practice anything else. And if you want more exercises like this, you can also download a PDF with exercises I've made that are specific to developing this skill. You can find a link in the description. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please like it and share it with your fellow musicians. And thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Happy sight reading.